It's time for me to get back in the saddle and get back to basics. So that is exactly what I'm attempting to do here. It's been a good month since I've shot any video of any type. Uh, and I've got the jitters again. Jeez, uh, I really wish I could get into the swing of this uh, and get into shooting videos without me being so nervous, but ah, it is what it is. I am who I am. What can I do? So anyway, aside from a little bit of shakes, you're going to get, uh, you know, you're going to get a fair review from me as usual. So we're looking at what appears to some of you to be vintage Stratos. However, this is not vintage Stratos, and I'll explain. For those of you who are not familiar with the commemorative edition Masters of the Universe, this was a toy line that Mattel brought out early on before they were, as they were getting secretly <laughs> with the Four Horsemen, getting ready to relaunch the entire Masters of the Universe franchise. They first went ahead and recasted these all of, uh, I think it was the first, the first offerings of the line. So you had the originals, you know, Stratos, He-Man, Skeletor, Beast-Man, Man-at-Arms, Tila, and the lot. They, they split it up into two waves. I believe Stratos here comes from the second wave. So the first wave was released in the year 2000. And the second wave here, which this Stratos is from, was released in the year 2001. So, uh, yeah, aside from Stratos, I'm remembering now there was also Buzz Off and Clawful were released in this line as well. So, one other thing I'll, I'll get out there right away before I forget. If uh, some of you out there are a little concerned now, like some of you may have not known about this whole commemorative edition thing and you're thinking to yourself, oh man, I'm, I'm collecting vintage Masters of the Universe right now, loose. How do I make sure that as I'm shopping for my vintage Masters of the Universe loose figures, how do I make sure that I don't get snookered by some dealer into buying one of these when I'm actually wanting to get the real deal, authentic 1980s versions. Don't worry. It's an easy, easy way to tell them apart. If you pick up the figure and just look at the very bottoms of their feet, just like so, you'll notice around the edge of the figure's foot, there's a lip surrounding all around the figure's foot. That is the way to tell this from authentic vintage. So that's how you do it. It's, it's uh, easy, easy peasy. So, and as you'll see, I've got this little piece of masking tape there on the table because unfortunately, uh, this figure does not stand worth a damn. Uh, I guess the elastic band inside of him connecting his two hips together the, the two legs together, I should say, is very, very tight, and he ends up, yeah, you know, he, he can't stand worth a darn. Um, I'm wondering, I'm suspecting that the commemorative edition Beast Man must have the same problem, of course, because of the shared legs. One other thing I'll point out about this Masters of the Universe uh, commemorative edition that's pretty interesting. Some of you who aren't familiar with the line may think, oh, you know, Mattel just... Uh, you know, dug up the, the old uh, molds that they used back in the 80s, dusted them off, and reused the molds. That is not true. That is not the case. Um, I remember reading this in a magazine a long time ago uh, with a, an interview with Martin Ariola. He was one of the he was one of the people that is you know he's pretty famous. <laughs> I'm sure Masters of the Universe fans uh, watching this hardcore fans know of uh, Martin Ariola. He's quite the character, really charismatic, really outspoken guy. <laughs> outspoken to say the least. <laughs> but at least he has the charisma, so he doesn't come off as obnoxious. He, you know, he's just a really outspoken guy, and I admire that. Uh, the point is, he actually let us in on the whole design process and the whole manufacturing process of these figures. 
So apparently, you know, Mattel had no idea that they were going to do this. That this was not, you know, this was not planned. So they had, you know, they, they didn't take care of the vintage molds. They just let them rot away. Or uh, some of them, he had said, I remember this, he had said that uh, all of the, the steel or the metal that was used uh, to make these, uh, these vintage molds had been destroyed long, long, long ago and was probably right now like in uh, cars or, uh, or in anchors. I remember he said boat anchors, ship anchors. I thought that was pretty funny. Typical Martin Ariola. But, uh, but anyway, so, you know, and besides the, um, besides the lip around the figure's foot, that is one giveaway about this not being the the vintage mold. Uh, another giveaway, but th this is a giveaway that, you know, only anal retentive fans like me, I guess, would notice. But there, there's really, you could tell by, by putting this next to a vintage one, especially at the shoulders, I find, the, um, you can really tell if you know what you're looking for. It's very hard to describe. Maybe I shouldn't have even brought it up. But uh, for those of you who are very familiar with this line, I think you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you put them side by side, if you look at the shoulder, where the cut is, where the articulation of the arm is, you can tell that's slightly different. But anyway, um, plastic quality on these commemorative figures is really, really good. The plastic quality is actually quite amazingly good. Um, just as good as back in the 80s, I would say, no, 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 I would say it's, you know, in the 80s it was pretty high quality too. But anyway, so if you're concerned about plastic quality, you know, Mattel <laughs> watching the money as they, they, you know, ah, they're a business. I guess all businesses watch the money closely. That's not fair. I'm not going to do any mud slinging at Mattel right now. But, um... One thing about the plastic quality that I wanted to bring up is uh, the C shapes. You'll see right here, right here, uh, that those are meant to fold down and go around the figure's wrist, to clasp around the figure's wrist. And you'll notice I haven't done that. Uh, the reason why I haven't done that is because the plastic quality on this is, um, it's very good, but it doesn't have much give to it. Um, I I was fiddling with it when I opened it, and I was going to clasp them around the figure's wrist, but I was starting to get a slight stress mark in the red plastic of the wings, so I decided not to do it. I decided, hey, it doesn't bother me. It, you know, it looks just fine the way it is. I, I'd rather leave it like that than get any stress marks. I just hate those. So anyway, there you have that. So... And uh, yeah, as you can see, I don't know if, I don't recall if I mentioned it, I've got the classics version here standing up beside him. Just to give you a little visual comparison, you know, in case some of you are familiar. And I'll give you uh, a little view of the entire card front. So yeah, th this was it. Ah, while I'm on packaging, I'll go on to this too. Uh, the commemorative edition Besides the figures being top-notch in quality, the packaging was something else. I tell you, it was, uh, it was really, Mattel really, you know, now that I think about it, I'm glad I did not badmouth Mattel earlier on because they really did not, they didn't pull any punches when it came to the cost. Because besides the reproduction, the full reproduction of the card front and back, the back is completely just, almost just like the vintage. Um, is that besides that, if that wasn't enough, they actually put this carded figure, this came carded just like our childhoods, on the bubble, on the card. Besides that, this was in a window box. It was completely inside of a window box with really nice, uh, the window box was really, the card on that had, uh, as I remember, it had some really nice uh, metallic uh, foil, metallic foil on it as well. It was really, really impressive. Um, I don't have it anymore. I kind of did away with it because 
You know, it, it was in really rough shape. The outer box was in really, really rough shape when I bought it and I decided, ah, I'm, I'd rather not have it in my collection in this shape. So I just, I tossed it out. But, uh, but anyway, I'm sure if any of you not familiar with this line, you can look up on the internet. I'm sure there are many, many, many pictures of them, of what the window boxes looked like. They were really impressive. So I'm going to take the classics Stratos out of here for a minute because I want to focus your attention on the mini comic lastly. The mini comics in this line were really, really, really impressive too. Uh, the quality, the high quality continued into the mini comics um, are really, there are two ways to tell. If you're a mini comic collector, yeah, there are two ways to tell the authentic from the uh, the authentic 80s, I mean, from this reproduction. <laughs> you can't get to it. This is a no-brainer. This is easy. If you look at the corner here, it has a little, a little number seven here on this one. I'm sure they're all numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever have you. And it also says below it, it says replica. So, <laughs> You know, it's, uh, you can't mess that up. Just look at the top corner. And besides that, the other way to tell the difference is the card. Uh, the, the cover, I mean, is made of a card stock. It's really, really interesting. And that's why this comic can stand up on its own like that, you know? So, uh, aside from that, give you a view of the back of it. The back of it's really cool too. You got the co-cells on the back, really, really cool. <laughs> I, I love this, uh, this co-cell artwork. You'll notice one interesting thing about it here is if you look at the color of uh, Zor's perch and, uh, and armor, uh, they're done up in green. I, I've remembered um, reading stories about uh, originally, uh, apparently originally, the, uh, the armor and the perch of Zor was meant to be green. So, uh, aside from the cover and the back cover, we'll give you a look at the interior of the comic. Yeah, the comic interior is really, really impressive too. Uh, really gritty, really, um, you know, really out of, um, you can really tell if you look at this comic, it has a real heavy-handed way about it. Uh, the combat is very, very gritty and, uh, and very, yeah, like very not filmation, very, um, yeah, very heavy-handed, very, uh, very serious. You can really tell that uh, this was done before filmation, you know, got a hold of the property. That This was way back when, when, you know, when this line was really in its infancy. You know, look at this. You've got Skeletor in like a trance type thing. You know, I haven't read this mini comic, but it just looks like he's in a seance there. Like that that's really, <laughs> you know, it, it, se it just seems really dark. A lot darker than what we're used to thinking Masters of the Universe as, you know. But anyway, that's about it. So I'm going to wrap this up. It went pretty good, I tell ya. Thank God, thank God, one, one review went good for me. So uh, now that I've got this out, I'm going to try my hand at doing a few more. So thanks all for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you all very soon in the very, very near future. Bye for now.